Hey, what's up? Adam Booth here at Dirt Rider. We have a stock 250X seat. We're gonna chop this thing down, show you how to shave it down so you get more leg clearance. This is good for people my height, people shorter. It's great for women riders if they want a little more ground clearance. So we're gonna start off taking the seat cover off. We're gonna show you how to use this very deadly turkey carving machine. Don't put this near your face. Bought this for $2 at the yard sale, brand new in the box. Good shopping. Then we're gonna use a, uh, it's kind of a wood planer type deal, but this shaves the foam down to a better shape. And we're gonna also talk about the shape of the seat after you shave it down so that you get maximum leg clearance and you can still touch and be comfortable while you ride down the trail. All right, so the next step, we gotta get all these staples out of this seat. This can be a kind of a tedious process. I either take a flat blade screwdriver or a little like spike tool like this, get it under the staple, pull it up just a little, and then I take a pair of pliers and you're just gonna pull the staple out of the seat. And as you can see, there's about 3,042 of these around this seat, so it's gonna take a little while. So sit back, enjoy. Try not to get distracted, because this is high entertainment stuff. So okay, we've removed all those pesky little staples. And you're gonna pull the seat cover off. You're gonna wanna save the seat cover unless you're putting on a new one. So when you're taking your staples off, try not to tear up the seat cover too much. And luckily this seat foam is in good condition. Sometimes you'll take, on an older bike, you'll take the seat cover off and this stuff will be kind of like uh, moldy or nasty from people pressure washing their bikes and letting their seats just sit. If you do wash your bike and you get the seat foam wet, just prop it up on the wall and let it dry because the water will all go to the end. Okay, now what I like to do is I like to take a marker and depending on the person's height and stuff, mark kind of my general area to cut the foam. I try to go a little more shallow than I need to in case I cut too deep, but you want to keep it off the plastic up here. It's really thin, so if you carve this too much, you're gonna to get to the, the seat base. So I make a rough, just kind of dotted line, and I try to follow a little bit of this. You're gonna to have to take some out of the middle. It might create a little bit of a pocket, but if you're short, touching the ground is a lot nicer than, than having a complete straight line to the gas tank. So I'll just come in here, and I try to do this equally on both sides, so when I'm running the knife through it, I uh, have about the equal cutout on the foam. And just try to ease it up back towards the back, because it's thin back here under the seat base. And uh, like I said, in the end, your seat might not look as cool as if it was a factory smooth seat, but you can gain almost up to two inches on this, which is really nice when you need a couple inches of clearance. So this is back to this uh, turkey carver deal. The blades are pretty sharp. You can do this with a hacksaw blade. It's not as easy. Uh, it takes a little longer. It's just not as cool. And be very careful with these. They don't really have a safety guard. They're not OSHA approved. But I just start by, I'll come in and try to keep the back blade to this my dotted lines. And like I said, it's better to take off a little too little than a little too much. And don't worry if it's not cutting real fast. You don't want to take uh, put too much pressure on it. Just kind of let it work its way through and it will work through. As you get deeper in, you want to pull this foam away. That keeps the blades from binding up on each other. And unfortunately right there I hit the plastic, but we'll glue a little foam on there before we wrap the seat cover back on. So what I'm going to do now is I've cut quite a bit. I'm going to square it off so I don't have to deal with such big chunks. So there's your first little chunk out. Hit the plastic, like I said. We'll shave the corners down. We can glue a little, uh, little foam back on there, shape it, and it won't be too big a deal. Do as I say, not as I do. So there's our first kind of run through, my mistake. Um, but then I like to take it, and I like to look down and make sure I've kind of cut it pretty level. And I'll come back through now with a knife. And we still have a lot of foam in the middle here, but I want to keep, keep this height in the middle and then shave down the sides. Because the worst thing you can have is a flat seat that's low because what happens is it kind of just bows your legs out and it doesn't really help them come down to the ground at an angle. You just kind of bow your legs out and it doesn't do as the right thing. So if you leave the middle kind of high and then really shave down the sides so that when you sit on it, your legs are reaching the ground instead of reaching out, works a little better. So I take this knife and I'm gonna cut 45 degree angles in this and kind of work it down. That's when we're gonna take the shaver and then ease the, uh, ease the shape into the seat.
Okay, we're starting to get a little, a little more of an, the shape down now that we've been shaving more off. Probably continue to shave just a bit more, and then I'll use the uh, hand shaver to get a, a little more smooth. So this is that little wood planer I was talking about. And this is, you just kind of, you don't need much pressure and different, different directions on the foam are gonna chunk it up more than others. But you can just start to uh, run this thing on the actual foam. You get some of those cut marks out of it and you can take down the high spots and start to get the shape you want. Don't do this on your living room table. Your wife will kill you when the foam is all over the house. Or your husband if you're a woman doing this. And you can see it's starting to take shape now from my, my 45 to my flat. And I'm gonna keep working that until it looks like a normal seat would look. But uh, much thinner and more shaved down. So the other tool is this like sanding disc on a 90 degree angle. It's not really sandpaper, it's just kind of this rough material. These spin pretty fast and they dig into the foam pretty quick, but if you're careful it can take a lot of material off and you can also get some basic shape out of it. So you can see uh, I use the uh, little handheld cheese grater tool on this side. It works really well because it's a longer surface so it's easy to control. I'm doing this side with the uh, four in, the little angle grinder, and it gets a little bit of dips if you're not careful and if you don't keep the speed slow. But either way, it'll work, and you just keep working it and uh, grinding on it, and kind of get it the basic shape that you really like, and then uh, go over and put it on the bike and feel it out and work on it more if you need to. covered in seat foam from head to toe. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Pretty consistent on all the smoothness, so we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. So we've got our seat, we've got our cover. Reusing the old cover, pretty happy with this. So stretch your old cover back over. Not a lot's gonna change front to back. You're gonna have to take up some slack side to side. So what I like to do, I like to get it on like this. Put a staple in the front and the back once I have it angled. You can use a hand stapler. I prefer air staplers just because they, uh, they run enough pressure and they really do the job. Watch your fingers. So put one in the, a couple in the back, a couple in the front, and then I start stretching over the sides. If you use your old seat cover, it's even easier because it's already kind of pre-shaped to your seat. flip it over make sure you got it kind of aligned here and then I, uh, I just start working down the sides and this is where you're gonna have more slack than you did before so your holes aren't gonna line up because you just shaved a whole bunch of material off of your seat So I anchor front, back, and sides, and I still have a little bit of slack in here. So I'll just kind of work my way back over the side again, and sometimes I'll pull out the staple I just did, or stretch around next to it to keep it getting tighter.
So that's looking pretty good front to back, side to side. And so I'll just keep stretching it over and stapling all the way around. Okay, so we've ran our staples all the way around. Good amount in here. I might go back through in a minute and add some more. But here's our uh, a cut, down, cut down seat. It looks almost like the first time, but just uh, a little smaller. And that's the key is to keep the side shaved down and not just flat, so it keeps the shape of a stock seat just much lower. That's probably about two inches lower. So now I'm gonna go through with a razor blade and trim up some of our extra saddle, uh, our seat cover material because now it's sitting on top of the plastic that sits on the frame rails because we lost so much material and wrapped it past I'm just gonna trim it back up got the little razor blade here and I uh, just want to take the extra material off next to where the seat base runs along the the, the frame the subframe you don't want that material in between your subframe and your seat base so now we have our shaved down seat and our bike and you can We'll put it on and you can kind of check out how, what a difference it does make. It's pretty cool. So, just visually, it still has the same shape and the look of a uh, stock seat, but it's quite a bit lower. 